Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Uh, folks, I have a brand new Telegram channel. I'm going to put it in the description box. So if you have Telegram, please subscribe to my Telegram channel. If you don't have Telegram, I encourage you to get one just because censorship is off the charts right now. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to have a YouTube channel. Uh, many of my other brothers and sisters in Christ are in the same boat. Censorship is crazy. So in the description box, please subscribe to my Telegram channel. I post a lot more on there, scriptures and encouraging messages and things going on around the world. Uh, so please subscribe to that. I will put that in the description box. But folks, I cannot keep up with everything. Again, I say this almost every video. Things are happening so fast. But I want to share with you a couple major breaking stories that just came out. But before I do, folks, recently a relative of mine, and actually several after a relative of mine spoke to me, several of my coworkers uh, came to me and said the same thing. They're saying something similar along these lines. We went from a medical emergency. I have to call it that because if I say the other thing, they'll strike my channel. We went from a medical emergency right almost into a world war. I'm sure that's a coincidence. Now, I'm not saying this is heading toward a world war. I'm, I'm repeating what my family members said and my uh, coworkers. Again, we went from this a medical emergency right to a world toward a world war. I'm sure that's a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. Folks, the last couple days, I've really been watching what's, un what's unfolding, and I can say this. Things are not as they seem right now. The news is feeding people the narrative that they want them to hear. But in the shadows, the globalists, the elite, and the world leaders, they are all working together, folks, to crash this current world system. They are working together to bring about a new world order, the coming empire of the Antichrist, the coming revived Roman Empire. We have to remember, folks, that God orchestrates everything according to his perfect plan. In the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 21, we read, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings, and he setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. Folks, the world is a stage. The actors and props are all in position to usher in the final act of bringing forth the coming empire of the Antichrist. So let's connect the dots with me here, folks. We have this medical emergency that comes about and changes the entire world. And then when all these mandates start to lift and it appears as though there is some sort of normalcy that could be returning, you have this war that erupts between Russia and the Ukraine. And now the threats of nuclear war erupting between Russia, the NATO members, and the United States. And then I saw this. You can't make this up, folks. Uh, this is incredible. This morning, I woke up to several alerts uh, from brothers and sisters in Christ and other people. This is one of them from CNBC. Wheat prices soar the highest since 2008 on potential Russia supply hit. The price of wheat climbed to its highest levels in more than a decade as Russia's invasion of the Ukraine advanced. Uh, Russia... Down, further down here, Russia is the largest exporter of wheat, and Ukraine is among the four biggest exporters of the commodity. So we have this war that erupts between Russia and the Ukraine. Russia is the largest exporter of wheat, and Ukraine's in the top five. So is it a coincidence that the two, uh, two of the top five nations, exporters of wheat, are at war right now, and the wheat prices are soaring? Now, what, 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 why am I getting so uh, hyped up about wheat? Well, we're going to get into that in a minute. And then I get this sent to me uh, from Ice Age Farmer. He actually, actually done a video. If you type in Ice Age Farmer, I believe on YouTube, you can see the video. Uh, but this was kind of like the article section titled, Shippers Cut Off Russia, Wheat Price Explodes, Cyber Attacks on Shipping. 
As major shipping companies are cutting service to Russia and the United Kingdom bans shipments from Russia, the disruption to the global food supply is now a lasting one. What effect will cutting out the breadbasket of the world have? And more importantly, who benefits from doing so? Christian breaks it down in this Ice Age Farmer broadcast. And then I get this from Al Jazeera. M-E-N-A, Mina, faces a crisis as the world's key wheat producers are at war. The near future looks grim for the countries in the Middle East and North Africa that depend on the Russian and Ukrainian wheat imports due to the war between the two, experts warn. Let me read some of this to you from Al Jazeera. As two of the world's key wheat producers face off an all-out war, tomorrow looks grim for Middle, the Middle East and North Africa countries, MENA, that need wheat from Ukraine and Russia. Russia is the world's number one wheat exporter and largest producer after China and India. Ukraine is among the top five wheat exporters worldwide. The wheat harvest starts in July, and this year's yield is expected to be a healthy one, meaning abundant supply for global markets in normal conditions. But a protracted war in Ukraine can affect the harvest in that country, and therefore global supplies. Later on in the article from Al Jazeera, we read, At a time of global food crisis and supply chain disruptions due to the medical emergency, this is a real concern, and it is already pushing prices up to record levels. Folks, it is not a coincidence that Russia and the Ukraine are at war. And Russia and the Ukraine, Russia is number one and the Ukraine's in the top five in terms, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the wheat supply. But Chad, why do you keep talking about wheat? What does the wheat supply and, and the global food uh the supply chain, what's all this have to do with the Bible? We're going to talk about that. But before I do, I want to reiterate what's recorded in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So in Revelation chapter 1, through Revelation chapter uh, 3, uh, this is in regards to the church age, which we're in right now. But we're told very clearly that we're going to be kept from the hour of temptation, which is going to, if you're saved, you're going to be kept from the hour of temptation, which is going to come upon all the world, referring to the coming tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. A horrific time that's coming that we're not in yet. We see it approaching, uh, but we're not there yet. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, again, uh, Revelation 3 finishes, you know, the letter to the seven churches, the end of the church age. And then Revelation chapter, uh, and at the end of the church age, excuse me, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, we read, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. John is told to come up hither, and he's going to be shown the things which are going to be hereafter, uh, which is symbolic of the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And then in Revelation chapter 6, when the Lamb opens the seals, again, the church is in heaven already at this point. We're going to be watching from the balcony when the Lamb opens the first seal. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, we read, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. After the rapture of the church, when all hell breaks loose, again, the world's going to be looking for answers. The future Antichrist is going to come onto the world scene. He's going to rise. He's going to make order out of chaos. All right? Uh, and we see here a crown is going to be, a, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. He's going to deceive the world. Let's continue. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second uh, beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. This is very, very clearly here when the Lamb opens the second seal, 
okay? This is talking about the red horse or the horse of war. We know war is going to be awful during the coming tribulation period. What we see happening right now, right, is nothing compared to what is coming during the coming tribulation period when the Lamb opens the second seal. Let's continue. And I want you to pay attention to this one, folks. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Listen to this here. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat. Did you catch that? What did I tell you to pay attention to in those articles I just told you to, uh, that I just went over with you? Wheat. Let's read verse 6 again. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see though hurt, not the oil and the wine. Then verse seven. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Notice, after the horsemen of war, the horsemen of famine comes. What are we seeing right now, folks? Look around. Again, a massive, the war between Russia and the Ukraine affecting the global wheat supply. And we just talked about what was in Revelation 6.6. 6. <laughs> the third seal opens to reveal the third horseman holding a set of weights and balances in his hand on riding on the black horse of famine. The angel revealed that the famine would be so bad that a daily wage will only be enough food for one person, leaving no food for family members. Folks, are you connecting these dots with me right now? The world is a stage right now, and all the globalists, elite, and world leaders are working together to crush this current world order, to usher in the new world order and empire of the Antichrist, which will be crushed by Jesus Christ himself at the end of the seven-year tribulation period when he touches down on the Mount of Olives to establish his 1,000 year millennial reign. I had to share this with you when I saw the stories breaking out about the impact of the Russia and Ukraine war and the effect it's gonna have on the global wheat supply and the food supply itself. You can't make this up, folks. We are watching the precursors to the four horsemen right now, folks. Make no mistake about it, the four horsemen are preparing to gallop. If you're watching this video right now, you're looking around this world and you're saying, what in the world is happening with all this craziness? The, the bottom line is this ship is sinking just, just like the Titanic sank. And it sank fast. This ship, this world system, it is sinking and it is sinking fast. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. And that lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the Apostle Paul gives you the formula right on the screen here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let's read it together. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So first you have to hear the word of truth the gospel of your salvation. If you've never heard the gospel of your salvation before, it's right on the screen here in the parentheses, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. This is the gospel of your salvation that you believe. You're putting your faith and your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it with his blood. So you could be reconciled back to God. So you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. And if you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. We serve a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And our sin, it separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified. 
and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, paying the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, he paid it with his blood so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. But going back to Ephesians 1.13, once you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is, again, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures, once you hear that and you believe it, you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, again, believing Jesus Christ paid your sin debt in full on the cross with his blood, and in his death, burial, and resurrection, look at what it says next in Ephesians 1.13. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. So once you put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, and in his death, burial, and resurrection, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There is a spiritual baptism that occurs when you believe the gospel of your salvation. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And on the bottom of the screen here in Ephesians 4.30, we read, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. But right here and right now, it's time to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to, to new life in Jesus Christ today. To repent, that means metanoia. It means to change your mind. What are you changing your mind about? You're changing your mind about who God is. You're going from unbelief, dead in your sins, to belief, a new creature in Christ, and you're agreeing with God about your sin condition, that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross at Calvary by shedding his precious blood. And you're believing, and you're putting your faith and your trust again in the gospel of your salvation, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. The bottom line is this, Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's horrific. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that's going to save you. In John 14, 6, we read... Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Acts 4.12 we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In 1 Timothy 2.5 we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own works, your own human efforts, you trying to earn your way there, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that's going to save you, and that is Jesus Christ in him alone. But you need to get on that lifeboat right now because none of us are promised another, our next breath here. And I want you to go to heaven, but again, Jesus is the only way there. If you were to close your eyes today, I want you to open them in paradise. Jesus loves you, and he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on the cross. In Romans 5.8, we read, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But just look around this world right now at everything that's happening, and look at what your Bible says. And when you do that, and you connect the dots, you will see several things. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back at any moment to rapture his church. And you do not want to be here for what's coming on this planet. So I'm imploring you. I'm begging you. Settle the issue right now. Get on that lifeboat, which is Jesus Christ and him alone. Because any other lifeboat you try to take to get off this sinking ship is going to lead to an eternity separated from God. And I want to see you in heaven. But you have to make a choice right now. You have free will. I can't make that choice for you. Look around this world. Look at what your Bible says. And I pray your eyes are opened. Because time is running out. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He's coming. And he's coming quickly. 
one day very soon at the appointed time, sooner than most of us even realize. Keep watching with me. God bless you all.